welcome back. The top stories on the ITV News Channel. New amateur video footage has been released showing the devastation after terrorists blew up a Kenyan hotel and tried to shoot an Israeli passenger plane out of the sky. Twelve people have been arrested but not charged. Today, Australia confirmed that it warned its holidaymakers not to go to Mombasa. A trainee beauty therapist has been describing how she roughed it for three days in an Australian rainforest. 19-year-old Louise Saunders from Kidderminster found her way to safety by sleeping under leaves and living on chewing gum. And next week's eight-day strike by firefighters is on after talks today broke down. The meeting between managers and the FBU lasted three hours, but no new offer was put forward. Toy manufacturers Hasbro make some of our favourite toys, Action Man, Cindy and Sabutio. Today they were in trouble with the competition authorities over some fun and games with pricing. They were fined £5 million for stopping shops from selling toys at discount prices. Chris Choi explains. What the office of fair trading wants for Christmas. Around £5 million quid from one of Britain's biggest toy suppliers. Hasbro will face a record fine for price fixing and tonight it's going down well with consumer champions. Well, it's great to see the OFT has not only got teeth, but it's prepared to use them. Price fixing is theft from consumers, and especially at Christmas, it's just got to be cracked down on. Now, don't get the impression that this is all just about monopoly money. Every year we spend a toe-curling £1.7 billion pounds on toys, and every Christmas parents ask, just why are they so expensive? Many people think today's news could be part of the explanation. So just how does the price-fixing game work? Vigorous competition in the toy market should mean shops could offer discounts. But officials found Hasbro agreed with 10 distributors to fix prices for early 2001. When distributors sold to retailers, they need to charge customers even more to make their money. Hasbro, maker of hits like Monopoly, was fined £9 million when the price-fixing was revealed but that's been reduced to 4.95 million because the company cooperated with investigators. Still, grave news for a firm making losses of 149,000 in the last quarter. The company couldn't buck the accusations. Officials found them in writing. The games firm claims it's always offered customers a good deal, and it says the illegal activity had no significant effect on consumers. Now the makers of Mini Soccer will appeal for the fine to be downsized. Meanwhile, tonight, these Santa's little helpers are in a spot of trouble. Chris Choi, ITV News. An important new discovery has been made which could help asthma sufferers to avoid serious and sometimes fatal attacks. The disease kills around 1,500 people every year, but many deaths could be prevented if doctors could tell the attacks were coming. Now they believe they can, as Lawrence McGinty explains. Jane Farmer's life was a misery because of asthma. She coughed all day, and asthma attacks kept her awake all night. Good afternoon, spiritual medicine. But now, with the new treatment, she has fewer attacks and feels on top of the world. I used to use this three, four times a day, if not more. Now, I use it maybe a couple of times a month. That's it. The new treatment is based on a simple test. Jane breathes in steam for a few minutes to loosen the sputum in the breathing tubes of her lungs. By analysing a sample of the sputum, doctors can tell whether she's heading for an asthma attack. <coughs> Basically what happens is the inflammation builds up in the airways and when it reaches a certain point, patients will have a severe attack. But unless you measure the inflammation, you, know, you don't know when that's going to happen. If you measure the inflammation, you can get in there with your treatment much earlier and actually prevent a severe attack from occurring. In the laboratory, scientists look for cells in her lungs which cause that inflammation. If they spot those cells, they can give the patient drugs early to fight the attacks before they happen. The arrow here points to a red staining cell, which is the, the characteristic feature of asthma and tells us that there's a high risk of a, a, a severe flare-up in the near future. All this testing equipment in the hospital could one day be shrunk down into a kind of breathalyzer that patients could use themselves at home. Doctors are convinced that would prevent some of the 1,500 deaths a year from severe asthma attacks. Lawrence McGinty, ITV News, at the Glenfield Hospital in Leicester.
Sport now and Martin Edwards has resigned as a non-executive director of Manchester United. He'll step down with immediate effect. His family has been involved in running the club for over 40 years. But Mark Longdon from Manchester United Independent Supporters Association says his resignation was inevitable after a string of tabloid revelations. I would imagine there's more an element of him having been pushed than actually taking the decision to resign. But obviously after the latest revelations in the Sunday Mirror, I think his position was obviously completely untenable. But then again, I'd have been said that for about the last five years anyway. It's, it's long been a, an opinion expressed in financial circles that, that Manchester United managed to make money despite Martin Edwards, not because of him. So I don't think it's going to be a great blow to the football club. Alan Shearer has been banned for two European matches after being found guilty of violent conduct by UEFA's disciplinary committee. European football officials made the decision after his clash with Fabian Cannavaro of Inter Milan. He misses the Magpies' next two European games against Barcelona and Bayer Leverkusen. The chairman of Leeds United, Peter Ridsdale, has been successfully re-elected to his post as the club's annual general meeting. There was speculation that his position was under threat after spiralling debts and poor results on the pitch. John Shires from Yorkshire Television reports. Peter Ridsdale left the AGM with no comment. Somewhat surprising since he's always been so voluble in front of a microphone and since on the face of it, the shareholders had given him a resounding vote of confidence. With the backing of the big city institutions, he was re-elected to the PLC board with a 96.7% share of the vote. But the shareholders who actually turned up today left him in no doubt they're unhappy about the club's predicament. Nearly £78 million in debt at the year end in June and currently 14th in the Premiership. A meeting doesn't change anything. And it's not as if uh, the chairman is announcing any special new initiatives. He listened, as he always does. He said he'd listened. Um, has he learned? Six months' time, we might know. Now the debt of Leeds United is quite frightening. And it's at the end of the day, it is a PLC. And it's responsible to its shareholders, of which I'm one of the unlucky ones or lucky ones. You know, the fans are happy with how the team are performing. I mean, the share issue didn't come into it that much, did it? Didn't really know, the it there's more what was going on on the pitch, you know, the, the lack of performance and passion. It's not an element of anger, it's an element of concern because, uh, I mean, ordinary football supporters, are, they're not just interested in football, they come from all sorts of walks of life and some of the things that were being said there by people who are managers and directors of other companies are saying, you know, you've got to get your house in order. Football fans are, of course, a fickle bunch, a few wins and Peter Ridsdale may once again be the darling of the cop. I think he's done a good job overall, which has gone wrong like I say, in the last six months, so uh, everybody's piling on board at the moment. I think all these United fans should get, should, they should sort out today and then get on with the job of getting the club back up where it should be. Cricket now and England's batsmen have failed to deliver on the first day of the third Ashes Test. They were dismissed for just 185 by Australia in Perth. Robert Key was England's top scorer, notching up 47 runs before being bowled by Damian Martin. In reply, Australia raced to 122 for two. The Market Report in association with IBM. No one knows e-business better. And a quick look now at the markets. Now you see the FTSE has closed the week, down 16 points at 41.69.4. And the pound is currently trading up against the dollar at $1.55 and up against the euro at €1.56. IBM, no one knows e-business better. Now, a special George Harrison tribute concert, concert is being held a year after the former Beatle died of cancer. It's been organised by his wife Olivia with some little help from some of his famous friends. Nina Nana reports from London's Royal Albert Hall. George Harrison's friends will remember him in an extraordinary concert. This footage released to us of the rehearsals. So joining the likes of Eric Clapton tonight, Sir Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr back on stage together. My dear friend George died on that date. It's one year to the day. And it's sort of a, a positive move. Olivia wanted to put it together and we all said, yeah. 
guests, all invited by Olivia Harrison, will perform George's music. Jules Holland spoke to me during rehearsals. He said the audience would be treated to an historic lineup. It's all these kind of really, I suppose, a gathering of the greatest band of all time, you know, because you've got sort of Ringo and Paul and you've got Eric in there and all these great, amazing players, you know, so. But, and also, it's playing something they all really love. It's been a hard day and night, and I've been working like a dog. George Harrison, who was the youngest Beatle, died from cancer aged 58. His son Danny had been working with him on his last album and was at his father's side when he died. Recently on American television, Harrison's widow Olivia spoke publicly for the first time about his final days. He gave his life to God a long time ago. He wasn't trying to hang on to anything. He wasn't, uh, he, he was fine with it. Tonight, the songs he wrote will have an astonishing showcase. Nina Nana, ITV News. Well, the time now is five minutes to nine, and here's Sean Lloyd with the ITV National Weather.